Hi, this is Ron Martinson at RonMartBlog.com, and I'm here today to show you Imagenomic Portraiture 3. This has always been my favorite skin softening product, so now that there's a new version, I'm excited to test it out and see what's new. So, generally when you come up uh, from the beginning, you have the default settings. Uh, there's also enhancements, which I always turn off. This is just personal preference because this is something that I can easily do in Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, but if you like that functionality to adjust the warmth or sharpness or so on, you can. But for my demos, this will always be turned off. And another thing to notice is that since I am using this from Photoshop, that I can have the changes apply to the same layer. However, I always prefer to have it as a new layer with the output mask option. And I'll show you why in a little bit. Now some important things to notice here is that I'm using the default setting with no smoothing on right now, so if I click for before and after you see it's the same. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do for the sake of us doing this demo from a 4K display is I'm going to click on normal. This way you can see some of the skin softening apply. Many times I'll do default for my own images and then normal for special circumstances. Now this was shot with a super sharp uh, Sigma lens, so I'm going to probably need normal for it, even if this was my real image. So uh, when I click on this white thing here, this shows me my mask and basically what's going to get skin softening on it. You see there's a lot of things that are getting skin softening that I don't want to get it. Now I can either start new, pick a mask color and then add to it, or I can work with the default mask and then just simply make some modifications. So that's what I'm going to do. And once I click one of these, it'll actually show me the mask here. So if I wasn't in this mode, I'd still get to see the mask. But I like to actually just stay in this mode and say, you know what? I definitely want some skin softening on these cheeks, so let's add that to it. And you'll notice it created an entirely different mask. And then if I look around and say, you know, there's some area here I want to have it as well, you'll see another adjustment. Now, of course, there's still things happening in the background that I don't want, but we'll get to that later. The other thing that I can do is come down here and say, well, you know, I really want some in this dark area of her face, but if I do that, it's going to bring a whole lot in. Because it's trying to you know, measure this range and all the um, tones within this range within the entire image. And that's probably a little more than I want. So it's easy to undo that. Just come over here and click just what you think you need. And this is kind of just a series of experimentations to get it dialed in just the way you like. And kind of personal preference. Some images are really tough because there's a strong difference between what's in the shadows and what's in the highlights. So sometimes you need to create uh, two layers or use this product twice in order to get everything dialed in just right. Um, for this particular one, I'm going to just leave it like that. Click OK. Oh, excuse me. Let's go ahead and turn off that mask and just show you one quick thing. One of the new great features of this one is that the zoom works really quickly. So if I come in here and zoom in, you'll see that it's all real time and the skin softening comes in really quick. If I press the space bar and drag around, I can move the image and you see when I click, I get before, I get after. This is a beautiful young woman with really good skin. However, with this super sharp lens and the side lighting, I'm going to get a lot of texture in her face. And so we're not really trying to make her look like uh, she belongs in a wax museum. We're just tr simply trying to dial down that really harsh uh, effect that we get. The human skin has you know, flakes and pores and texture that um, is you know, perfectly fine when we look at it in normal life, but when we have an image, we tend to stare at things, and so um, this is sort of addressing some of that harsh texture. Now there's still some flaws in here, and this product doesn't really account for us working on that. You still have to do that in Lightroom or Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And what you'll see here is that it's created a layer, at, just as I requested. If I Alt-click, you can see where the mask has been applied, but you'll see that it also did some things that I didn't really want. Now there's two ways to handle this problem. The way that I generally do it is that I come in here and I'll press uh, Alt and create a black background, and then I will use my Wacom tablet with a pen and a white brush set to 100%, and I will 
make it really big and just go and add all that skin softening back where I want it. And you don't need to worry too much as long as you hit the main areas that you care about. And arguably you don't even really need it over here, but just for consistency's sake I'm throwing that in there. And so when I do that, if I go Alt click on my mask, you can see how much was applied. I can see where I've missed. And let's click that again. And you can see that now I've got my skin softening. Now, since this isn't something that actually just show this layer again. Oops, we missed a little area here. Sometimes it helps to do it that way just to make sure we got it all. All I did was alt click or let's just show this one layer and I'm just painting in any areas that I missed. And then I can undo anything that I don't want by just using a white brush on it. So I've got this dialed in pretty quickly. And then I don't have any intentions of ever uh, revisiting this, so I'll just say apply layer mask and just save some pixels in this file. Just basically that no reason to have that data around anymore. Now people ask me, you know, will you go in and fix all these little flakes and stuff? And of course if I'm going to print it or if I just want to have the original image edited, then yes I would. If I'm going to be just taking this image and just showing it on, let's say, Facebook or something like that, where the image is going to be resized, since there's so much data in this file, you lose some things when you downsize an image. So that texture, you know, the little thing on the nose and little things on the skin, they'll go away anyway. So you don't really need it. Uh, edit that if your goal is just to quickly get something on the web. So it's all about what your output intent is. So in my case, um, I like to have my files always cleaned up the way that I want. And I'll generally put that on its own layer. The reason why I do that is that I like to keep my work separated. So I'll use the healing brush and I'll come along here and just tap these guys. And you know, depending on what all I wanted to do, I might go hit a few other things. But for this demo, that's good enough. So now, oops, one more thing here on her chin. So now we can see the before, after. We haven't made her look like a wax dummy. You can still see plenty of texture. But what we have done is just improve the overall look of this image. Now, if you really feel that you know, all this is just too much uh, um, softening for you. One way to handle that is to dial back the opacity to bring some of the texture back. Another way to handle it is to come along and add some noise. So you can control or command click the layer that has the skin softening on it, filter, and then say noise, add noise, and then just add some Gaussian blur. And what that's happening there is because we did the healing brush on another layer. And so you can kind of come in and apply um, a monochromatic uh, Gaussian blur, or you can use a product like um, Real Grain from ImageDomic. So now that we have that one, let's go work on another image. Now for this image, her skin's pretty good, but one of the things that it, this highlights is that when you have a model and you can see um, her whole body, um, we generally have makeup for the face, so skin softening may be optional, but for the body, there's rarely any makeup on the body. So you know, this model has long, beautiful, dark hair, but the downside of long, beautiful, dark hair is that you have um, pores and you have texture. Um, so if I you know, scroll into her legs is that you're going to see a little bit of that on her legs. And you know it's nothing really wrong with it, but um, for a fashion image we generally want to get rid of that kind of thing. So this is where skin softening serves a, a non-traditional purpose that sometimes people don't think about. So for a moment 
I'm going to go back into the old portraiture just for those that are upgrading so you can kind of again see the difference between before and after. The old UI doesn't scale very well for 4K and then when I do things like zoom in you see how there's a much longer delay and that's with the fast preview. If I do accurate it takes even longer. Now I do lose uh, a little bit of functionality with the preview windows that I had before but other than that um, most of the functionality still carries over it's just done a little different way things are kind of scattered all throughout the UI so that's just a little quick tip for those upgrading so I'm going to go into portraiture 3 and again for this image right off the bat it did a pretty good job. I think it actually used some of my mask information from before and got it pretty close. And if I turn that off, you'll see that her legs look so much better now. Again, there wasn't anything wrong with her legs. This just makes it feel like we would expect it to look like, you know, fresh shaved legs, um, you know, kind of that nice fashion look. And then over here on her face, again, pretty face, but it looks a little better with less texture on it. Um, Again, how much you use is personal preference, and you can always zoom in and see that there's going to be a lot more texture actually when you get in and look at the image up close. If you feel like it's too much, dial it back, or you can make your own adjustments using smoothing. And this uh, affects, uh, much like sharpening and stuff, this affects different size textures and stuff. Um, generally, I find that. Um, I just use the preferences and that meets all my needs but if you really uh, felt like you know okay I want a little less large texture or more fine texture or whatever and came up with something you liked cool new feature in this version is that you can create your own presets and not only that you can easily import and export presets so it's a nice new added feature there's also an improved uh, undo and redo and so um, not a whole lot of changes but the ones that are there are super helpful there's also um, an ability to see before and after side both side by side or above and over but personally I just prefer this method and then using the click to before and after if you're in one of these tools as I've mentioned before you can just press the spacebar and get before and after. So back to the demo. It's just time for fun. We'll just use the black one. And then we'll say, let's go ahead and add this into it. See, we lost a lot. Add that. Okay, now we get more back. We got it a little closer dialed in the way I want it. You can see from this mask, though, that there's more than I probably want on this whole thing. But that's okay. I'll show you how we can deal with that later. Because since there are shadows on the face, sometimes you have to make that compromise. And you can kind of see what all is going on here. So I'm going to say reset this back to the normal, which I've got. Turn that off. And now you can see the skin softening applied. I'm actually quite happy with how that turned out. So I'm going to click OK. And again, the way you deal with the fact that we have a mask with a lot of busy area in the background that you really don't want applied. It's just to come along here and create a black layer, use a brush, and then quickly white brush and quickly highlight what you do want to keep. It's just going to be her face, her arm, her hand. And here, make it a little bit bigger, and then we'll get her legs. So now that we have that, we can just show just that layer and catch any spots we might have missed, because it's usually quite common to miss a little bit. So we'll kind of be a little more aggressive and then dial back. And you don't need to make all this stuff perfect. It kind of depends on, you know, what's going on in the background. Darks really aren't going to make that much difference, but if you have, like, some real textures that you don't want to see softened, 
then definitely take the time to get those out. Get, we'll add some more back here. Her arm kind of goes down a little bit, so we'll add that. Get a little more of the hand. Make sure we got everything we want for the face. There's a little more fingers we missed. All of her forehead. And I'm actually okay with what's left there. So, again, once I have it all set the way I want, I personally always apply a layer mask just to get rid of all those unneeded pixels when I save the file. And you can see before, after, before. Notice all the texture in the legs and shoulders and face. And after, oops, excuse me, and after. And if this um, was the size that I was going to view this image at, then I'd say I'm done. If I wanted to make sure every pixel was perfect, I'd come into 100% create a new layer, use the healing brush, and I'd probably hit a couple spots that are just obvious. Again, not trying to make her look plasticky, not trying to make her uh, look significantly younger, but just getting rid of some things that annoy me, like some hairs and so on. And I'd probably spend more time on this one than I'm going to do in this demo, but you kind of get the idea. And we'll kind of deal with that guy later. This is all just grunt work. So, with that, I hope you've enjoyed this demo. Please be sure to go to ronmartblog.com to read my review and get a discount on Imagenomic Portraiture 3. Thank you.